Hello friends. So today we will talk about balancing of ledgers. Uh, on this channel, we have a series of uh, lectures which is on introduction to accounts. Uh, we've already done a couple of lectures on balancing of ledgers and various other topics uh, prior to that. Uh, if you have not listened to the other lectures on ledger, uh, please first uh, play those back uh, unless you're already clear on those concepts. Uh, so today is the last uh, of the series of lectures on ledger. Uh, this is called balancing of ledgers. So the objective of uh, making the ledgers is to be able to eventually make your final accounts. Uh, the final accounts will be made, uh, which consists of profit and loss account and balance sheet. So from the ledger, we will basically balance it. And after balancing ledgers, we will prepare the trial balance and the trial balance is the basic raw material used for preparing final accounts. Uh, so once you have a trial balance, you can make the final accounts. Uh, in order to make the trial balance, you have to balance your ledgers. You need to obviously have ledgers to be able to balance them. And to make your ledgers, you need to have your journal entries and you need to have your subsidiary books, right? And then going backwards to be able to prepare your journal entries, you should know your golden rules and your golden rules and your classification of accounts. So that's the whole, you know, chain uh, of accounts. If you are able to understand this six or seven, six step process, uh, you know, you will master accounts in your life. Uh, so now we will come back to balancing of ledgers. So in the ledger, what do we have? We have the debit side and the credit side and uh, the left is the debit side and the right is the credit side. Uh, now, you have posted various entries in the ledger, uh, which is from your journal and from your subsidiary books. And when you total the left side and the right side, in most cases, one of the two sides will be greater than the other. Okay. So, whichever side is greater, the debit side is greater, you call it a debit balance. If the right hand side which is the credit side if that is greater then we call it a credit balance very very simple uh, never forget this okay if the debit side total is greater it's a debit balance if the credit side total is greater then it is a credit balance if both the sides are equal then there is no balance right if the balance is nil okay so it's uh, as simple as that Okay, so uh, now how do you decide the balance? Obviously you subtract the greater amount uh, and then the smaller amount, you subtract it out from the greater amount. So let's say the, the left side debit side adds up to uh, 80,000 and the right hand side, it adds up to uh, 20,000. So 80,000 minus 20,000, that is equal to 60, 60, 60,000. So your balance is 60,000. It is a debit balance, it is 60,000. Okay, so that's about understanding the what do you call the balance, whether you call it debit balance or whether you call it credit balance. Now this knowledge is very important because when you make a trial balance, you have to write that amount either in the debit column or in the credit column. And if you write it in the incorrect column, everything will go wrong subsequent to trial balance. Okay, so your debit balance will go in the trial balance on the column for debit and your credit balances will go in the trial balance on the column which is credit. Um, now, how do you technically write it on the piece of paper? Uh, you can see that in the solved examples, but it's as simple as this. You always use a pencil, okay? Don't use a pen and you have to have an eraser. So you will add up the left side first and, you know, below the uh, box of the ledger that you have made, you will write that amount by pencil. Same way the right side, the credit side, you will add it up and you'll write it by pencil. So on the left side, you had 80,000 and on the right hand side, you had 20,000. So basically what you do is on the right side, you will write down by balance carried forward or by balance carried down, right? Carried forward, carried down. These are words which are used interchangeably. Uh, and that amount is 60, 60,000. So 
that is how you balance the ledger now the total of both the left side and the right side is 80000 okay? and that is why we are saying balancing the ledgers the debit side and the credit side the you know the the, the lines you make below uh, on the total amount those will add up to uh, the same amount right and it will add up when you mention the balance so that's called balancing of ledgers so when you are making a closing balance it appears on the opposite side of the nature of the balance because when the left side debit side is 80000 the it is called a debit balance it is called a debit balance because before balancing that side is greater okay so you will write that down on the right hand side that is how both the columns add up to 80000 next day of the Uh, month of the next month, first day of the next month, or the next first day of the next financial year will be written down on the uh, two balance brought down sixty thousand. That will be on the left hand side, which is going to be a debit balance. Okay, so the balance is carried forward. Then uh, over there you will write down two balance brought down or brought forward, which means it has been brought down from where from the previous period. Okay. so from and in the uh, previous period where what do you write down to uh, buy balance carried down so this balance is going to be carried down where into the next period okay so that's really how it happens uh, we look at a few solved examples uh, now knowledge of this is very important like i said if your trial balance doesn't tally then your final accounts will not tally in accounts everything has to add up and left side right side has to be equal asset side balance in the balance sheet liability side has to be equal so if it is not equal it means somewhere in the prior steps uh, you have made a error okay uh, so let's uh, let me share my screen and you can look at uh, a few solved examples Okay, so so this visual over here is good, right? If you are looking at a weighing scale, this is going down. That means this is a debit balance. Okay, so the side which is heavy, uh, that's another way you can try to remember it. Which side is heavy is it is that kind that balance. This is a debit balance. Okay, so we have these journal entries. We're not going to do uh, journal. We're not going to do posting. We're going to do balancing. So all this has already been done. Someone has posted all these entries. This eight thousand is not there. Okay, this is the process of balancing. So you have all these entries, right? These first uh, Feb, seventeen Feb, third, third, and twentieth Feb. So you add this up. Twenty thousand. You will not write here first with a pencil. So you will make this grid, right? This table over here. You will make this. and you will put make all these rows and columns and you will keep this and somewhere down here with pencil you will write down 20000 okay and then somewhere here with pencil you will write down 12000 right why this is 6 and 6 12 so 12000 with pencil are write down here 20000 with pencil are write down here debit side is greater that means it is a debit balance and then i will write down this 8000 over here as on the last calendar day of that period Uh, so this is last calendar day of february uh, to 28th of february 2018 uh, by balance carried down 8000 so this becomes 20 and then on 1st march this goes on this side as two balance brought down okay very very simple uh, very important very important uh, let's take another example okay illustration 9 goods bought from anupama whatever this is again part of making journal entries right now we are learning balancing so we will not go through the correction correct entries all these has already been done someone has posted these entries and someone has uh, sorry passed these journal entries and the, uh, the entries from the journal have been posted into the ledger uh, which is all of these entries except for this one 
okay except for this one all the other entries are ready for you now you have to do balancing so 7700 is this over here in pencil write down 7700 and as you get more experienced and if you are very good at maths you may not even need to write this down in pencil over here it could be in your mind and uh, you could be able to write this is 8000 there's no need to write down 8000 down here you can see it it can't be more than there's only one entry so 8000 minus 7700 this is a credit balance because the credit side is greater than the debit side we call this a credit balance so 300 is the difference two balance carried down 300 this is written on 31st of jan and on 1st of february you will write on buy balance wrong time 300 okay so this is balancing of ledgers now we'll move to another solved example the last solved example to understand balancing so these entries except for this is already ready uh, someone is giving you this as a question so this is 27000 a pencil you can write down over here 27000 now you have to add this up right so it is going to be 24050 uh, when you add all this up right now uh, uh, not a math class but a quick uh, way i would do this i'll put this 300 into this 5700 make it 6000 and i will forget this 50 for the minute and i will put this 500 into this 1500 so this is 2000 6000 8000 8000 plus 16000 24000 and i had left this 50 so 24050 so 24050 uh, is going to be written in pencil over here this is 27 this debit side is greater so it is a debit balance uh, so on this side i will write down 2950 by balance carried down on the last calendar day of this month 30th of september first calendar day of the next month first october two balance go up down to 950 okay so it is extremely simple what you should never forget is what balance it is called it is written on this side means it is not a credit balance it is a debit balance why because the debit side is greater it is heavier so whichever is before doing balancing whichever side is greater it is called that balance okay so i think three solved examples is enough to understand this fairly fairly simple concept right it's it's uh, very very easy now do i have the we have the same thing in the books of Abha, okay? In the books of Nabha, okay? So please understand this. This is the entries in the books of Nabha and they have, why are they giving very similar sounding names? But this is N and this is A. So the same entries will be passed in the books of A, this is Abha, and she will make the entries of Nabha. Now, these will be a mirror image opposite side, actually. Okay, if you are passing entries in the books of Nabha, then the same entries will come exactly on the opposite side, but these are not related parties. Uh, you will not be the accountant for both these parties. So, uh, but, but uh, this could just get you a little confused as to why is it coming equal and opposite. So let it be 11 standard. Uh, don't, don't, don't look at this example, uh, ignore it. Okay. Uh, now this is more and more salt examples on uh, balancing. They are first making you pass journal entry, then they are making you post the journal entries into the ledger and finally do the balancing, but we'll just do this. So balancing these entries are by balance brought down. So remember, most often you will also have the balance which is brought down. So that will be already there, right? Now, after that, all the, except for this, everything else is already there. So this column adds up to 20,000, this column adds up to 8,000, so 20,000, 8,000, so 12,000 will write down here by balance carried down debit balance because the debit side was greater than the credit side before we started the balancing process okay so now that's enough for balancing okay now the other very important concept which uh, a student of accounts should always know when i tell you the name of an account you should be able to know whether it is going to be a debit balance or a credit balance I shouldn't need to see the ledger. I shouldn't, in most cases, right? There will be exceptions, but the thumb rule, right? So if I tell you, you know, 
I bought an apple, it's going to be a red apple, right? So you don't need to see the apple to understand whether it is green in color or red in color. It's a red apple. But sometimes in life, there are green apples as well. But if nothing is mentioned, and if I say I went and bought apples, it is very fair for you to assume that it were, the color was red. Okay. So the same way in accounts, depending on the name of the account, uh, which if you are experienced enough, you will be able to say that, okay, this will be debit balance or this will be credit balance, right? So you should be able to know that, uh, right? And also remember, it's not, it's a thumb rule. It is not always, it's not like a science, uh, you know, uh, theory like gravity or something, right? It's, it's not universal. There will be sometimes exceptions. Uh, so uh, a question in an exam could be based like a trick question where they want to test whether you understand the exceptions. So let's try to understand how do you classify types of accounts and what kind of balances you will expect. So real accounts is what I will start with. A real account will always have a debit balance. Why? Okay. Because furniture, you purchased furniture, it will always, it will either be a positive balance, a positive debit balance, or it will be zero. You cannot have a negative balance in furniture because for a real account, you look at it this way, that it is positive balance means you have that real thing in your business. Okay. And if it is not there, it can go to zero. Okay. Uh, that's the thing right now though when i talk about money like cash cash okay cash can never be negative right you cannot have ne money can be negative right if you have taken a loan it is negative but then you will take a loan from a person that becomes a personal account okay remember that uh, so in that sense uh, cash is real and a bank balance is not real Bank balance is a personal account because it is the name of that bank, ICICI bank or HDFC bank or Bank of Baroda, right? So those are uh, personal accounts. Okay. Uh, cash can never be negative. Furniture can never be negative. Machinery can never be negative. Okay. So remember, this is the rule for real accounts. If you are confused, then you are entitled to assume it would be a debit balance. Okay. Now, when you come to personal accounts, okay, personal accounts can be debit balance, it can be credit balance. So as personal accounts themselves, there is no thumb rule. It could, there is no, no thumb rule. It could be debit credit. There is no uh, such thing. But within personal account, there are certain categories. You could have debtors. Debtors are the people to whom you have sold goods. These people will always have a debit balance or a zero balance. Creditors are the people from whom you purchased. Goods. So they will either have a credit balance or they will have a zero balance. Okay. But so within personal accounts, there is no such thing of debit balance or credit, but, but you should be able to segment within personal accounts, which type of account are we talking about? And with knowing the type of account, you now know whether it would typically be debit balance or credit balance, right? Then within personal accounts, the other categories will be your bank. Right? So bank should always be a debit balance because you are having your own money kept in the bank. But sometimes you have an overdraft from the bank, which means that the bank is giving you a loan. So your balance is only say 20,000, but you have issued a check of, uh, 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 of 10,000, sorry, uh, of 30,000. So you will have a negative 10,000 balance. So one way of saying it is your balance is negative 10,000. The other way of it is saying that your balance is credit 10,000 because that automatically means a negative balance of 10,000. Okay. So that is something which you need to know. The other types of personal accounts are loans, right? Loans, loans are in itself loans. Loans will always be a credit balance. Okay. So, uh, loans which have been availed by you. If you have given a loan to somebody, then it will be a debit balance. Okay. So loans received will be credit balance. Loans given will be debit balance. Uh, so these are things as you gain experience, 
you will know top of your head uh, but try to remember them if it doesn't take too much effort try to uh, take, doesn't take too much trouble and if it sticks in your head good remember it if it doesn't stick in your head no problem at a 11th 12th standard level you are not expected to uh, know that level of uh, you know uh, detail okay so that's about uh, your being able to understand the nature of the account and whether you expect it to have a debit or a credit balance so <clears throat> i think that's about it for uh, today's uh, lecture the next one will be trial balance uh, which then leads you into final accounts uh, now trial balance you should be able to uh, prepare a trial balance uh, by looking at all your ledgers for each and every ledger if it is a debit or a credit balance on the last day of the period you are writing that down in the ledger and from the ledger you will uh, mention it in the trial balance so tomorrow we will uh, talk about trial balance and uh, <clears throat> that will then put an end to all the basic concepts of accounts uh, which are required to be known before you can move forward and prepare a balance sheet so <clears throat> that's uh, what we have for uh, today uh, and uh, like i mentioned at the start of the lecture we have a series of uh, videos uh, on uh, basics of accounts if you liked today's lecture uh, please press a like and subscribe to the channel uh, thank you